God isn't thrown off by this coronavirus. He already has a plan in place. Would it be nice to know what the plan is? Yes. devotional. I'm super excited for this one so I'm not going to waste any time and just get right into it. So today we're going to be starting at the very beginning because it's a very good place to start. Anyone else got the sound of music lyrics going through your head right now? <laughs> we are going to be looking at Genesis and the bigger picture. So I heard a quote from a guy that said if you want to hear God audibly open your Bible and read it out loud. You know, in our hands, we are literally holding words that God spoke. Like, we are so privileged to have access to this. This book is God-breathed and inspired, and it is so rich and life-giving, like, I love it. But it takes the whole Bible to read any part of the Bible, which is why I always go into background and context. So today, I thought I would take us back to the beginning. And Genesis is the book of beginnings. It tells the story of creation with the driving theme being covenant. The meaning of Genesis in Hebrew literally means in the beginning. Bereshith means in the beginning. So in Genesis 1, when it says in the beginning God, in Hebrew, this is Bereshith Elohim. And Elohim is the word used for God, but actually El is God and Elohim is God's plural. And we know because of what Jesus has taught us that this plural is the Trinity. So from the very beginning, in the first four words of the Bible, we get to see the existence of the Trinity. So Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created. The Hebrew word for created is bara. And create is like the kind of best word that we can come up for it, but bara means order it according to function. And Genesis isn't just text about how the world was made or how it was created, like that's a given. Genesis is about what the world is here for, like what is the function. The question isn't, is there a God, but what kind of God? So, Bereshith, Elohim, bara. In the beginning, God created. And from before this moment, you were in God's heart. He knew how you'd be feeling today. And from before this moment, his plan and purpose for you and your life had been perfected. We can see a lot about the character of God in the first few chapters of Genesis. God is personal. It says that he planted the garden and breathed life into Adam. Genesis 2, 7 said, Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. God's face is probably the first thing that Adam saw. God walked with, with Adam, he walks with man, he is personal, he talks with man. You know, we are made as humans to have communion with God and communion with each other. God is powerful, he speaks things into being, he breathed out stars, he made the heavens and the earth, like he is Lord, he is holy, he is set apart unlike anything else. And God is creative. Every single snowflake, every fingerprint, every DNA is different, made in the image of God. Genesis 1, 26 and 27 says, Then God said, let us make human beings in our, in our image to be like us. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. The Hebrew word for image is salem, which can also mean like resemblance or statue or likeness. And in the ancient world, you would put a salem of that God in the temple so that when you go to the temple, you would see what the God looks like, which is why we can't make idols because we were already out there. Like it's us. You are made in the image of God. And we know that God is beautiful and perfect and you're a mini him displaying his beauty to the world. Everything else that he created, he called good. So think of the most 
beautiful places in the world like the stunning sunsets, the beautiful starry skies, they're only good in God's eyes. You are very good. Genesis 1.28 then says, then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Like God made us with a purpose and a plan. Like each one of us was created with a purpose and we fit perfectly into God's plan. I was thinking the other week, like how wild it's gonna be when we get to heaven and we get to see the whole big picture of everything, every single thing that we have done that has fit perfectly into God's plan. Like even down to smiling at someone or greeting someone on the street, like we don't know what impact we're leaving on a person or what seeds that we're sowing. We don't know everything God has planned for us and the way that we fit into his big master plan because sometimes we only see a little bit of it or sometimes we don't even see the fruit of our actions. But God created us with this plan and it's gonna be so wild in heaven when we get to see how God has used us and how like the big and the little has all come together. You know, we know the story of Adam and Eve and many questions arise about them and God and why God allowed them to sin, etc. But God promised us Jesus from the very beginning. Like as soon as Adam and Eve sin, there was a plan in place. They, there is redemption and the promise of Jesus. And we can see the perfection of God's timings in his plans. And when we step back and see the whole picture, we can totally see God's hand throughout. And I know that it's like easy to question like why prayers don't get answered, like why bad things happen, you know, the, the common quote, like why do bad things happen to good people? Like why, why am I contending and contending for this thing to happen and it's not happening? But his plans are perfect and he promises us hope and a future. From the very beginning, we get to see that there was a God, plural, the Trinity, and from Genesis 3, we are promised Jesus. And we can see him all the way through the Bible to Revelation. God wasn't thrown off when Adam and Eve ate the apple. Like, the promise of Jesus was already the plan. God isn't thrown off by this coronavirus. He already has a plan in place. Would it be nice to know what the plan is? Yes, but we get to rest and trust in him and his perfect plans. There are so many Bible verses about trusting in God and his plans, and I know that it is easy to say, but sometimes harder to receive or to believe. And I so get that. Being evacuated from the mission field earlier this year due to COVID, I don't think I have ever felt so stripped of my plans and so lost and confused as to what I'm doing in, in life and what is next for me. But I understand that this is just a season and I don't wanna rob myself of the fruit and the joy and the lessons that this historic moment in time holds. You know, we can say that we have lived through a global pandemic, which is wild, and I can spend my time dwelling in the disappointment that all my plans have changed, or I can spend my time going deeper in the word, discovering more of the character and nature of God, and see fruit come from this time, trusting that God is greater and, than everything going on and greater than my plans. You know, this is just a season and in the span of a lifetime, like it's just a blip and we can gain so much from this season. We get to hold on to the truth that before the world was created, God knew about the season that we are in and his plan is still perfect. And this season holds something of value for each one of us. Proverbs 3, verses five and six says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. We get to trust in him, and what a relief that is. Like, I know that it is tough, and earthly emotions come into play, and God so cares about that, but there is such an invitation for us to trust him with all of our hearts, and to seek him, and to let this be a season of fruit and lessons. Like, I don't wanna look back on this season and see a wasted time. I wanna look back and see, wow, his plan is perfect. So, wherever you are during this time, like, I want to encourage you that God has a purpose and a plan for you in this season. And, 
Like, feel free to reach out to me if you would like some prayer, prophetic word, or encouragement. Like, I'm here for you, so just send me a message. But that is what I have got for you today. If you enjoyed it, leave a little thumbs up, cheeky comment, subscribe for more, and have a wonderful rest of your day, and see you next week. Bye.